Hello and welcome to Lorain, Ohio. My name is John Davison, finishing operator for Materion Performance Alloys. Materion was first in Lorain when Brush for William opened a facility here in 1935, just four years after being incorporated. The original facility closed for good in 1948 and it wasn't until 1997 that Materion returned to Lorain when Brush Wellman opened the Brush Engineers Bronze Facility right here. Today we have 45 employees working here and together with our Elmore facility, we're improving the world with our support of military forces around the globe. Here's our story. I'm Tony Wilson. I've been with uh, Materion now for two and a half years and I've been at the Pebble plant uh, the entire time right here in Elmore, Ohio. In 2002 I enlisted in the United States Marine Corps um, I spent four years active duty. During that time, I spent one tour in Fallujah, Iraq. So after 2006, I got out of active duty. I moved around a little bit for automotive. And then as I moved back to Ohio, I felt the, the tug to get back in it. I joined the Ohio Air National Guard right here in, in Camp Perry, Ohio. Service is something that kind of fills my tank. To me, it's worth it to serve for my family, for my company, for my nation. So down in Maxwell Air Force Base, during officer training school, I was able to interact with a lot of pilots. And it was pretty neat to tell them that, you know, hey, back home, um, the company that I work for, we're involved in, you know, the optic systems that helps you make, you know, quicker informed decisions on the battlefield. Also helps you make, um, in terms of, of ISR, intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance, it's gonna help you make more informed decisions. So it's pretty neat. A lot of people don't realize that this facility supports the military across many platforms. We are not only in aerospace defense applications, we are in uh, optical targeting systems. We have provided technologies through the use of beryllium that have really drove the accuracy and the speed with which the military needs to protect the land. Back in like World War II, it used to take about 9,000 bombs to hit one target. In today's world, with the technologies that we've developed and are using, we only need one missile or one bomb to do the same thing we could do years ago. So from a targeting aspect, our materials are used in laser-guided laser ammunition due to the heat and the optics and the stability that's needed. For example, a target might be located three miles away and it's being designated with a laser. So we don't want that laser moving when we have a missile or an engagement coming in that's trying to track against that. So the stability of the material is very important and our material absorbs energy really well and so therefore it can dampen the vibration from the aircraft into the sensor. Think of the soldier, they're on the ground, body armor, carrying a lot of equipment going through rugged terrain. Where it used to be 10 years ago, they had to carry two or three different pieces of equipment that might have weighed an extra 20, 30 pounds. Today, we're pushing that design down to five to six pounds, all encompassed into one piece of equipment. These handheld units, they want more properties, more capability. Well, in order for that to happen, there's electronics in there and heat gets generated. And heat's bad in the optical world. It'll create distorted images. So you have to get that heat out of there. And one of the things our material does is it transfers heat really well away from all the hot spots. So it makes the design compact, lighter, and easier actually for the design engineers to do what they need to do. Given that beryllium materials are very expensive to make and we do want to stay on the print and the various military applications we have, we're always striving to try to find innovative ways to manufacture and utilize the material to reduce the input cost. Nowadays, in order to help save the customer costs and pass on some of that savings, we have a lot of different methods where by utilizing the finished part from the customer, we could design a can or a bag or some other way to take out a lot of that material from the beginning design and we end up selling them a net shape that is closer or near to where their finished part is and that uh, comes the definition of near net shape. We have had our first major application in the Bradley fighting vehicle. The Bradley fighting vehicle is the infantry carrier for the U.S. Army. It has a major machine gun on it and it carries eight to ten troops. This application began in 2009 with a call from an engineer looking at uh, Toughmet as a possible replacement for the current material used in the Bradley vehicle for sleeve bearings. Toughmet is a alloy of copper, nickel, and tin. We melt it here in Lorraine, and once it's melted, it's heat treated, and that's what helps give it all its properties. It has a very uh, different microstructure, and it uh, makes it uh, very wear resistant. It's very strong. The Army tested Toughmet in uh, actual vehicles and the Toughmet lasted four times as long as the current material. Due to our success with the Bradley, we've now been specified on multiple military vehicles for the Army. 
the applications we serve are absolutely fascinating. You look at China, North Korea, Syria, Russia, there's always going to be a need for the military presence. I am very proud of the work that we do, knowing that we can go out there and we can make a difference. We're able to give the tools to our warfighters to be safer, which ultimately makes us safer back here at home. That's our story from Lorraine and Elmore, Ohio. I'm John Davison in Materion Performance Alloys and Composites Businesses. We're proud to make advanced materials that improve the world. Thanks for watching.